We found ourselves on a moonless night, crammed into my friend Jake's dilapidated Subaru, navigating a labyrinthine graveyard that seemed to stretch on forever. The rusted car chugged along, its exhaust sputtering in protest as we followed a narrow, winding path hemmed in by imposing tombstones and gnarled trees. Our headlights carved through the darkness, casting eerie, shifting shadows among the mausoleums and graves. With every turn, the old Subaru protested with a groan, as if echoing our own doubts about our ill-advised adventure. The air inside the car was thick with anticipation and unease, and the silence was only broken by the occasional creak of the vehicle's worn suspension. Are you sure this is a good idea, Jake? I finally spoke up, my voice barely above a whisper, as if speaking louder would disturb the peace of the dead. Jake, gripping the steering wheel with white-knuckled determination, shot me a sideways glance. Come on, Alex, he replied, his voice wavering slightly. It's just a bit of fun, nothing's gonna happen. But as we delved deeper into the heart of the cemetery, the oppressive atmosphere seemed to thicken around us, Tombstones, weathered and moss-covered, stood like sentinels, their inscriptions fading into obscurity. The night pressed in on us, and an unspoken anxiety hung in the air, even as we tried to convince ourselves that this was all just a harmless adventure. Eventually, Jake decided to stop the car at a small clearing near a picturesque pond. We clambered out, the gravel crunching beneath our sneakers, and walked toward the water's edge. The pond lay serenely before us, its surface shimmering with reflected starlight. In the middle of it all sat a solitary figure on a large, moss-covered rock. Our collective breaths caught in our throats as we beheld this enigmatic silhouette. It was as if the darkness itself had coalesced into a human form, all black and devoid of features, save for an unmistakable old-style top hat perched atop its head. For a moment, we stood frozen, the unease in our hearts growing exponentially. Then, perhaps out of a combination of fear and a misguided sense of bravado, we waved and called out in unison, Hi! Our voices reverberated through the still night, only to be met with an eerie silence. The figure on the rock remained perfectly still, like a statue abandoned in the graveyard by some ancient, malevolent force. What do you think, guys? Should we approach? Whispered Emma, her voice trembling. Before we could reach a consensus, the figure abruptly sprang to life in a way that defied all logic. With uncanny speed, it glided over the water's surface toward us, every step more unsettling than the last. Panic surged through our veins as we watched in disbelief. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the shadowy figure vanished into the pond's depths, leaving nothing but ripples in its wake. Screams erupted from our group, and we instinctively scrambled back towards the safety of Jake's car. But what we found there was an even greater horror. The Subaru's engine refused to start, as if cursed by our eerie encounter at the pond. The vehicle's aging frame seemed to shudder in protest, and we were trapped in a nightmare of our own making. And then came the banging. It began as a sporadic, echoing thud from the back of the car. Each sound was unpredictable, creating a maddening rhythm that sent shivers down our spines. Terrified, we peered out of the windows, but the darkness was impenetrable, revealing nothing of the source of our torment. With trembling hands, I reached for my phone, desperate to call for help. But as I stared at the screen, my heart sank. There was no signal. None of us had any cell service in this desolate place. The next 30 minutes felt like an eternity. We tried everything to get the car started, but it seemed as if some malevolent force held it captive. The banging persisted, growing louder and more erratic, as if whatever haunted us was growing impatient. Finally, after what felt like a lifetime, the engine roared to life, and Jake wasted no time slamming his foot on the gas pedal. We sped out of the graveyard with reckless abandon, leaving the sinister scene behind. 
The dark, twisted trees and looming tombstones receded in the rearview mirror as we hurtled toward the cemetery gates. As we crossed the threshold, our hearts slowly began to regain a semblance of normalcy. Miraculously, our cell phones regained their signals as if the cemetery itself had been the cause of our disconnection from the world. But as the adrenaline subsided, a sense of dread lingered, etching the night's events into our minds with indelible ink. In the days that followed, we tried to make sense of what we had experienced, but there were no rational explanations. None of us could deny that we had encountered something beyond our understanding that night. It wasn't an animal or a human, it was an enigma that defied all logic and reason. We never returned to that graveyard, and we never spoke of the shadowy figure in the top hat again. It remained a haunting memory, a chilling reminder that there are mysteries in this world that are better left unsolved. As for the old Subaru, it never fully recovered from that night, and Jake eventually had to retire it. To this day, whenever I drive past a graveyard on a dark night, I can't help but glance nervously at the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the shadowy figure with the top hat lurking in the darkness. And though I know it's irrational, I can't shake the feeling that something or someone is out there, watching, waiting, and ready to defy the laws of nature once again.